So I'm going to go slow the speed down a little bit to about 1200. Whoa, that's why you wear a face shield. <laughs> Hi y'all, welcome back to another Four Ways Collaboration video. Uh, this month's video was suggested by Sam Angelo, and he said uh, we should turn a set of something, which gives us pretty broad leeway. As we're approaching Christmas time, it's time for me to start thinking about Christmas decorations. So I'm turning a set of, of wonky, windswept uh, Christmas trees. Uh, smaller ones you could hang on a tree, something smaller than this that will turn shortly. Uh, you can make them a bigger uh, set of, of uh, three of these different sizes. Could make a nice table setting for, for Christmas. It really doesn't matter what kind of wood you use, whether you use a small piece of pine or a large piece of whatever branch or tree you've got uh, to make different sizes. It could be plain wood like this pine, or it could be spalted like this uh, fig or this, this red oak. Uh, I like spalting. It, it could be figured wood. Uh, the length of the wood ought to be approximately three and a half times the diameter. Uh, so that's, that's the scale. All right, let's mark the axis first. Uh, let's look at the block of wood we're going to be turning. And let's say the bottom of, that's the bottom of the wood and that's the center. And we're going to call this distance, this diameter, X. We're going to mark five axes starting with the middle. And we're going to call that one number three. I'm going to, and then we're going to... Uh, make five points in the middle that's going to be 40% of that. So let's just measure that and get a feel for what it is. In this case it's uh, 14 inches or a little over 6 inches, so a little bit over 3 inches on each side. So let's see, so we can have the furthest point there and then about, about there. So let's switch colors. So we're going to start from one end. We're going to call this, this uh, Axis number one, we're going to mark that and, and use a center punch or, or an awl. Then we're going to have this one, and that's number two. The one in the middle is number three. The, the next one is going to be four. And then five is going to be a little bit less than this distance. Like that, about half the distance uh, between those. Mark an, a, an extra distance where you're going to uh, turn away some of this waste with an oval so you know where to stop. Uh, some typical point axis uh, distances based on the size of your blank, size of your blank. inch and a half or 40 millimeter blank uh, set to points about 4 millimeter apart for a 2 inch blank or 50 millimeter set them about 3 sixteenths or 5 millimeter apart. 2 and a half inch blank 62 millimeters. Uh, set the axis points about a quarter of an inch or six millimeter apart. Of course, leaving that last uh, distance between four and five a little bit less than the other distances, about maybe half. I want to give a shout out to Alicia Mazur's uh, channel, Epoxy Wood, for the inspiration for this video. So let's do our first one with this block of pine, about five, uh, five and a half inches long and an uh, inch and a half square. I've got it marked out. Uh, you know, from one to five, about 40% of this diameter. I'm going to put it around it, put a tenon on it. So I'm going to put a tenon on the opposite end of those numbers. I've already marked center. So let's put this in here. Bring up the tailstock. And let's get around and put a tenon on it. So I'm going to use a spindle roughing gouge. That's the fastest way for me to turn wood with corners on it that's square. That's uh, spindle orientation. Now, when you're turning a very small project, you better make sure that you can, you've got enough room to put a tenon on it. So before I get it completely round, I'm going to go ahead and and I've knocked off the edges. Now I'm going to put a tenon on it, and then I'll finish rounding it off. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this at a, a bit of a uh, oval. So I'm going to turn this oval first, just to get rid of excess wood. So 
I'm going to uh, mark a line just outside of where I think my uh, step center is going to be, like that. And then we're going to wind up making this somewhat oval like that. And I want to try to stay within those those lines. I want I want room for that step center to be able to hold on the outer perimeter as well as the inner. So. Hope that makes sense. We'll get the speed up to a couple of thousand. Let's stop and investigate. So You can see I've stopped right at that line I sketched. Now we want to do the other side by switching to axis number one. Just to check our progress. We're not getting real scientific here. We're just trying to get rid of some of the excess wood. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm gonna put this in the chuck in a, in a moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark the bottom of the vase while it's in the number one position because we're gonna start with number one and proceed to two to three to four to five. So I wanna mark the very bottom of the base of the tree. And I'm gonna use a thin parting tool for that. And just mark it. Don't wanna go in too deep at this point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mount in a chuck. I could probably do all this tween centers, but I feel more secure with it in a chuck. I've got to say, this is not the only way to make this project. may not be the best way, but it's the way that I did it, uh, 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 figured it out after I've done several of them and thought about how's the best way to explain it. If you come up with something, uh, uh, some tips or suggestions that you developed as you make yours, I'd appreciate it if you leave it in the comments below. For this smaller project, I'm using my little SC2 record power jaws with a uh, chuck with a 40 millimeter jaws. Now, before I get it too tight, I'm going to go ahead and, again, we're going to put this in the number one axis point. And you can see this uh, live center uh, is able to register on the wood, which is what I'm, I'm trying to accomplish. So now I go ahead and tighten this up. And I've got a pretty, pretty good, pretty uh, fairly uh, secure hold on this. I did not get this completely round, but that's going to be all right because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn a base on here on that number one axis. So I want to make that base right about there. And the, the, the width of the base is going to be smaller than the bottom part of the tree. So, oh, maybe 70%. Uh, so if this is an inch and a half, we're looking at somewhere base of the tree being close to an inch or 25 millimeters. So I'm going to use a beading and parting tool to just take that down. Got some rattling going on here, so let's make sure everything is secure. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to have five sections of tree plus the base. So I'm going to just, I want them to go from larger to smaller and from and, and the same thing with the height. The, it, each one, they get smaller until we get to the last one. And the last one's going to be twice as big as number four. So we're going to start with, a, and I'm going to do this by eye, nothing scientific. I'm going to mark this as section one. That's going to go away. Uh, then we're going to proceed. So number two might look something like that. Number three might look like that. 
number four might look like that, and then uh, uh, five is the rest of it, about twice as big as, as number four. Is section number number four, and you'll see why in, in a moment. So now I'm going to, you can use any number of tools for this operation. I find when that for me, it's easier to start this, this initial undercut with a thin parting tool, uh, and I'm going to angle it in just slightly. Now I'm going to switch to a to a half inch spindle gouge and just shape this. And first, actually, I want to shape, I need to shape the base a little bit more. Uh, I think I'm just going to reach and use my uh, beading and parting tools, kind of like a skew. Just come in at an angle. Undercut it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to switch back to the spindle gouge and and I'm going to scallop this just a little bit Drop the handle Scoop up almost like I'm scooping ice cream And I've got a little bit of ridge there Let's see how that looks all this is on axis number one, the base and, and section one. Now, you got if you're going to do any sanding at all, you got to sand it before you move on. So let's go ahead and just touch this up a little bit with, with some sandpaper at a slower speed. Okay. Now we're going to move on to section two. So I'm going to go to axis point number two, and I've got to loosen my, my chuck a little bit to get there. Tighten it up again. And again, we want to make that height just a little bit shorter than section one. Uh, and, and we're going to reduce the uh, diameter a little bit to maybe, oh, right about here. And see how that does. So again, using my thin parting tool. Speed up a little bit. I'm going to round it off a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. To get the diameter down a little bit. Then I'm going to come in again. That scooping cut to the back. That looks good. And again, I'm going to touch that up with a little, little sandpaper. Just to get rid of some of those sharp edges. And now, that was quick. So now we move on to section number three. Marking, moving to axis point number three. Oop, wrong chuck key. First world problem, having too many chuck keys. Okay, now we're in the center. Then we tighten it. And again, I want to make that just a little bit narrower and a little bit shorter than this. So maybe, maybe right there. Something like that. And then again with the parting tool. Almost like making a cove. We come in with it, the tool on its on almost on its side, and just slowly lift the handle. We come in. Oh, this is too big. I didn't I didn't reduce the diameter, so let's do that. Uh, 
That doesn't look too bad. Got a little ridge under here I gotta clean up. Okay. Slow it down a bit before we touch it with sandpaper. I'm not gonna go through all the grits. I'm just gonna knock off the crisp edge. One, two, three. Next one is gonna be four. And we're gonna go to two that axis point number four. And we can barely see it. We've used five and one and everything through that, but it's a little mark in between. So let's get that there. Okay, that's got it. And again, we're going to use the thin parting tool. Always spin it, make sure nothing's going to hit. Get the speed up since we're going to be cutting some air. Actually, before I even do that, I think I'm going to take down some of this. That should make it a little, little more uniform when I, I touch it here. Touch that sharp edge, a bit of sandpaper. Now we're going to go to our last axis, number five. Now, this one is longer than this one because we're going to come in and leave a little bit of room at the top. So let's take down the dial, let's double check it, making sure, yeah. Get the speed up since we're turning some air. All right, now we're going to come in here. The top of the tree is going to be right about right about there. So I'm going to come in from this side. I'm going to switch to a smaller uh, spindle gouge, a 3 8 make it just a little easier for this small area. And we're going to scoop in almost like a cove right in there. In from the other direction. Whoop! Good thing that, that point was in there. Okay. Um, let me touch that up with a little, little sanding on the edge. Okay, now for this last part, we're going to cut this off with a saw and that's where the chuck makes it a little bit easier so it's scooping in this direction so that's where I want to I, I want to keep that same incline just kind of let's see so this is the widest area so I'm going to cut it off along there okay now we could either sand this, but we want to shape that a little bit. And the easiest way to shape it, and we're just going to just shape it a little bit. We could do this on a belt sander. Might be more appropriate for larger ones or harder wood. But this doesn't take but just a moment. Okay, and then we're going to sand that up a little bit. Again, on larger pieces, this might be easier on a on a belt sander or not. But I want this little bit of a, a cove there. So this is, I, I want the tip to be definitely moving in that, that direction. The very tip top of the tree. And that's pretty well got it. Now, I'm going to uh, part this off. Now, this... To part it off, I need to get back to that number one axis that I started with. And 
and I'm going to have to sort of guess on that. But it doesn't have to be perfect. And the reason I'll show you is when I part it off, I just don't want to be parting it off on the center axis because I want the base to be it when it stands up in the same orientation as, as section one. So I'm just going to come in there again with that thin parting tool and part it off. Make sure this is going to clear. <laughs> Crease, crease that uh, opening there for the parting tool so it doesn't bind or pinch. And then before it goes shooting off, and it's off off a little bit, so don't go don't get too carried away because that extra weight can tear that loose. We're just going to take a saw, flush cut saw, and cut off that last little bit. And there we go. And There's our, our tree. And we could put a uh, uh, little eyelet up here at the top. I think what I would rather do to hang this on a tree is drill a small hole and, and put a piece of cord in there. I forgot to hit record on that last one, but what I did was I marked a, a, a side hole uh, here with an awl and then just drilled a hole. And I'm... You can use any kind of little decorative cord. Uh, one uh, 16th inch colored cord would look very nice, but in this case, I just used a little piece of monofilament line. And there we go. Now let's turn something a little larger, a little more challenging out of that uh, 10 inch log. Uh, it's about three inches in diameter. All right, I'm gonna go a little bit faster on this larger project. And again, we're looking at something a little over 10 inches, uh, oh, about three and a half inches. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is adjust the tool rest, and it's like always get in the habit of spinning your work. Make sure it doesn't hit like it will in this case. Now, because I've got this knot I want to I've got to deal with, I don't want to use a spindle roughing gouge because that's used for spindle orientation. But when you've got a knot coming out, that's end grain. So I want something a little different. So I'm going to go slow the speed down a little bit to about 1,200. Whoa, that's why you wear a face shield. <laughs> let's put it back on here. And let's not take as aggressive a bite. Okay, now when you're dealing with a log, let's readjust the tool rest. Again, make sure it clears. When you're dealing with a log, uh, and at this point in time, I think I could probably go to a spindle roughing gouge. I've got rid of most of that. We want to take away this bark a little bit at a time. Let's just don't skim back and forth, or you'll be able to wind up with a big flap of bark in your face. So that's about an inch at a time. Now, it, when you go to turning this off center, I'm not uh, is not real excited about using a uh, 60 degree cone because it's not going to hold as well as a ring center such as the uh, Powermatic or or Robust or or Jet uh, original equipment manufacturer that has the cone on it that you remove 
or this record power uh, ring because you're going to get a better bite uh, when, when this is uh, off axis a little bit. So we're going to use this one. We're going to start with, with uh, five. It's worthwhile mentioning this does not work very well with large pieces where you're extending over. You want something that's uh, got a little more handle, a little more leverage, like this uh, Carter and Son thin parting tool. They're about the same thickness at the end, but this has just got so much more more leverage to be able to control that cut.
again nice nice shape nice that red oak spalted red oak makes a nice color and you can see where I undercut it just a little bit with that uh, Dremel carving tool that I had on hand and then and round it over the top a little bit as an alternative to the bell sander you can always put a put a mandrel in your uh, in a chuck with appropriate jaws you can use a drill chuck but you better have a draw bar Use the finish of your choice. Uh, there's an old expression, shiny cell, so sometimes using some type of clear uh, lacquer like this, uh, Chromacraft Clear Acrylic Lacquer uh, works well. I like to dye some of them. I think if I have a, a table grouping, I think I want to have a mixture of natural grain and, and, and dye, something with, with spalting. Uh, dye, you can either use transtent, mix it yourself. I like this Chromacraft. It's pre-mixed because it'll go long, long way. It'll probably be in my estate sale. It's got 10% uh, shellac in it, so it dries real real fast, and then you come over it with some, some acrylic. But you could use an oil, uh, uh, antique oil, or wipe on poly uh, if you wanted a more natural look. Well, these were fun. I hope you'll give them a, a try, and don't forget to check out the videos from my uh, four-way collaboration partners, Richard Raffin, Thomas Love, Thomas Etch, and uh, Sam Angelo, uh, I'll have the links in the uh, description area. If you got any comments on this project, please leave them in the comments below, suggestions or, or questions. Remember, y'all stay safe and come on back, you hear?